Good morning, uh, distinguished guests, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to welcome you here uh, to the Council Chambers of Queen's um, and to uh, really get the opportunity to address our, our really um, long-standing friend and acquaintance. Um, I, I do think as well it is it's a lovely room to come to uh, with this uh, beautiful backdrop of the uh, woman emerging from the shadows um, to, to really celebrate an event such as this. My name um, is Donna Fitzsimons. I'm head of the School of Nursing and Midwifery. And um, as I say, it's a great honour to welcome you all to this very special event. Uh, I would like to first of all begin by thanking the Chief, Chief Executives Club at Queen's and Women in Business, which includes uh, timely careers and diversing uh, Mark and I to this event, and they have really organised it, and we're grateful to them for that. It's such an honour, personally and for the university, Dr Raj Algerg, to welcome you once again to Queen's and to offer you our very sincere thanks um, for allowing us this great opportunity to spend some time with you today, because um, I'm sure everyone in this room is really looking forward to hearing from her. Uh, Dr Raja is not only a, a long-standing friend of our university, uh, she is uh, a leader whose um, reputation is really renowned in publications like Forbes and Gulf Business. She is consistently ranked amongst the most influential women in the business world in Arab regions. So uh, it is a great honour to have you with us today. Uh, Dr. Raja is Chair and Managing Director of Esha Shah Al Ghur Group and the Dubai-based conglomerate, which is one of the biggest in the Middle East, 27 companies in total, ranging from retail to construction to metal foundry. Dr. Raja is a board member of Dubai Chamber of Com Commerce and Industry and also uh, a board member of the Dubai Academic Health Corporation, uh, which we are also having the opportunity to reconnect with here today, and we're very grateful for that. Um, Dr. Raja chairs the National Bank of Fujara and the University of Dubai. She is the founder and president of the Dubai Business Women Council, and in 2019, she became the first Emirati woman to write an autobiography. She has described her book as an account of the challenges of balancing tradition and culture within the swiftly evolving city and country that is Dubai. And she hopes her story will inspire women to pursue their entrepreneurial dreams. Now she has followed this with another book, The Power of Authenticity, Three Principles of Leadership Success, in which she writes about harnessing emotional, intellectual and spiritual energy can lead to success in an increasingly competitive and diverse corporate world. Dr. Algerg is no stranger to Northern Ireland, nor to this university, but her relationship uh, with Queen's came about by sheer serendipity. In 2014, she came to Belfast to take part in an event, again organised by Women in Business, and it was there that she met our then Enterprise Minister, uh, Arlene Foster. At that time, uh, Dr. Algerg was leading a strategy at home to establish a University of Medicine and Health Sciences, an initiative to address the healthcare, education, training and research needs of Dubai and other regional communities. But she was there uh, not just uh, looking for a prestige partner to help her fulfil that ambition, but that's when Baroness Foster uh, intervened and told her about Queen's. And as I say, the rest really is history. There are uh, so many pearls of wisdom in uh, the power of authenticity uh, that it is really difficult to pick out any one in particular. But I really love the story that you tell in that book of how your son, in a, in a really um, informal, normal, everyday setting as he's, as he's doing his studies, um, takes time out as it were, to sharpen a pencil, such a, a simple exercise that brought to you a very important lesson in life of how um, important it is for all of us indeed to stop the clock now and again and recalibrate and really recharge and rethink uh, our next steps on the journey. So I think those 
or amongst many salutary lessons in that book that I, I certainly uh, will take with me into the future. Initial discussions began that year around the partnership model that might be used, and in January 2015, an academic partnership services agreement was signed. Um, and in September 2016, the Mohammed bin Rashid University of Medicine and Health Sciences Services enrolled its first undergraduate students. That pioneer cohorted, a cohort graduated in June last year, and I was really honoured to be there amongst the, the guests. It, uh, was a wonderful celebration. And there was also more in store for that uh, collaboration. A second agreement was signed in 2018, this time to establish a College of Nursing and Midwifery. And it's my very great honour to be involved in that initiative. That college enrolled its first students in September 2020 uh, in the heart of a global pandemic. And despite all of those challenges, they very successfully transitioned to graduate last June. All of that is thanks uh, to the vision and uh, tenacity of our guest today. And it was an appreciation of her many achievements that we here at Queen's were also <coughs> delighted to award her an honorary doctorate for her services to business and commerce. That was in June 2018. And on the same day, her son Omar graduated with a degree from our School of Architecture. As you can see, the whole family are intertwined and very much part of the fabric of our kinship relationship with um, MBRU. So um, you will all, I hope, join me in welcoming Dr. Raja Isag al to Queen's today and to also welcome Dr. Roseanne Kelly, Chief Executive of the Women in Business Group, uh, for an informal conversation in, in uh, keeping with the caliber and the, the notes within the book, a very great opportunity to learn from two very experienced women in our midst. Thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you. Um, just, I'm not a doctor yet. Donna, it's, it's coming. Um, so thank you, Donna, and to uh, Queen's University um, for inviting me to, and giving me the privilege of having this conversation with Dr. Raja today. Um, as she says, I'm Roseanne Kelly, and I'm the Chief Executive of the Women in Business Group, which includes the Women in Business Network, Diversity Mark, and our new Timely Career Service for Women Returners. Um, like I say, I am truly privileged to um, be able to facilitate this conversation. I met Dac Dr. Raja back in 2014 when we had our International Voices of Leadership Conference. And it was Arlene here who had issued the invite um, over. Um, I was impressed then. Um, but having read your book over the weekend and having done some research, I am completely in awe of the, this woman and your achievements are just amazing. So um, the journey of leadership that you take the reader. Before we go to the journey, I would like to say good morning to everybody and thank you very much for being here today. It's my privilege to be here in Queen's University. That means a lot to me. That really built a beautiful uh, experience in my uh, career path uh, that I never thought it would reach to that extent. And thank you very much to the Baroness that I, uh, as Dubai Business Women Council, we were there in her office. We had a beautiful lunch with her. And then she took us to the uh, balcony, say, saying that we will have a nice good picture with the whole group. And as I was standing there, I saw Queen's University from that beautiful balcony from your office. And here where I asked her, and she gave me all the details I didn't uh, just stop there, but in 10 days time or one week uh, later on, I had to go back uh, to Dubai the next day, but in 10 days time, I came back to Queen's University with the team, Dr. Amr and the people who were with me. And we really did a beautiful study and research about this uh, university that we were convinced that is going to be the university that we want to affiliate with. Thank you. Brilliant. But 
Before we move on to your current book, um, The Power of Authenticity, this is your second book. Maybe you could explain in terms of the first book and how it came about, because you're an extremely busy woman. So um, where did the first book come from? And then where did it, how does it lead on to the second yeah. one? Uh, thank you very much for giving me this uh, chance. And I, I really would like to link both the books together. First of all, I thank uh, the uh, presenting me to the audience uh, and that all, but take all that away and just keep, uh, keep the only thing, Raja is with you, okay? So that's how I like to deal with my people, with my friends, with the people I come to know. Uh, definitely, as uh, we were discussing even, that uh, you know, the years takes you through beautiful experiences and bad experiences. And you just uh, you know, uh, face all these, whether you face them with good brain thinking that this is the way I want to move, although it is a bitter one, or this is the way I want to move, although it is a very simple, smooth one. And to me, I think the bitter one is more important than the sweet ones, because the sweet ones are all easy ones that they come to you. You evaluate, you value that, but the hard ones, those are the ones that really uh, 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 improve you as a human being and polish your skills of leadership, of understanding people, of dealing with the situation. So these are two different things that we have to value in our life. So what I went through in my first book was all my youth, all my uh, childhood, my education in Kuwait. And uh, for me to be going to Kuwait uh, in the 70s, 1973, it was a big a challenge for me. And it is mentioned in my book is that my parents wouldn't uh, allow me to leave the country. And as soon as I went to my father telling him that, you know, Dad, I finished my secondary school, he said, oh, you mean to tell me all the schools in Dubai you have finished them? <laughs> I said, yes. He said, uh, then what, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go to the university. He said, and what is that? And now my father is not uh, educated from uh, Cambridge or Oxford, but he's a self-made man. He's a walking encyclopedia. So I told him, you know, I have to travel. He said, where? I said, either you, you pick for me the country that you would like me to go to. And I am ready to go to any country, but I want to finish my studies. So he said, uh, I said to him, Egypt. Baghdad, Kuwait. So he picked Kuwait very easily and he said, go there because part of your family is there and they will look after you. And I did not say no. I went to Kuwait. Mm -hmm. But there where I wanted to apply for Kuwait University, I wrote uh, uh, economics and politics. Number two, favorite economics and politics. Number three, economics and politics. <laughs> okay. And I went to Kuwait. So when I went to Kuwait, I didn't see my name in the economics and politics. <laughs> and I became so disturbed. I said to myself, oh my god, these are, this is the, the subject that I would like to really study in my life. Then I went to the dean. I said, uh, and she was a lady. I said, you know, you didn't give me the, the right uh, subject that I, I was dreaming of studying. So she said, you know, I don't have place in uh, politics and economics, and I don't have uh, place, uh, you have written three uh, favorites, and it's all uh, economics <laughs> and politics. I said, but this is my uh, future uh, vision, you know? She said, no, I have uh, an uh, Arabic language. I said, thank you very much, I don't want it. She said, I have an Islamic culture. I said, I don't want it, thank you very much because I want something to really help me in my life and for the future. Then she said, you know, there is a last chance for you is a chair in English literature. Now take it or leave it and go back to your country. <laughs> yeah, she did that. So I said to myself, now if I go back to my country, I will uh, really take a, a wrong impression to my father, to my community. Why did they throw her out of the university? You know? <laughs> Because people will talk about it like that. So I said, OK, I'll take the English, because the English will always help me. And uh, I've been going and coming to England every summer, 
with family, English family, living with them, talking English, so it will be easier for me. So I took the English uh, literature and I graduated. And also for your information, after 20 years of graduating from Kuwait University, I go to one of the conferences in, uh, uh, in uh, what is it called? Uh, the university, the big university, our national university in Dubai. Uh -huh. Zayed, sorry, <laughs> Zayed <laughs> University, and here Sheikh Nhayan is there, and he tells me, uh, I was sitting uh, uh, there, and he was sitting there, so he calls me, why are you sitting there, come here, because I want to introduce you to a woman from Kuwait University, and that woman was the dean. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so, goodness. You know, so what I did is that I, I thank her because I had to do the opening speech. So I gave her my card. I thanked her very much that she advised me to go to English literature. <laughs> <laughs> but very here good. I am an, you know, in economy. But I didn't take politics because now I am not looking into that. And this is how I started. Oh, very good. And through that, of course, with all this experience, what, what happens to you as a human being? You learn. And you learn um, how to be... Uh, uh, of course, it all depends on you as a human being. You learn how to be transparent, how you, how you want to be a dedicated person, how do you, what do you want to achieve in your life, how far do you think about your career path, and where are you going to reach. And all that really pulled me into taking this path of authenticity. And how does it have a link with uh, the leadership uh, qualities? For any person, because as people, as a human being, we all have leadership qualities in ourselves. Now, whether they are very small, whether they are very big, whether they are with a politician or economist or, 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 but even in a mother who is looking after her children, there are qualities of leadership because we all lead. Now, how do you enrich those qualities and nurture those qualities? This is the most important thing. So this is what led me to authenticity okay. and how to deal with my team and how to be there for my team. And this book will lead me to another book that okay. says succession. Once I am uh, successful in transferring my business into the third generation without any hiccups, then <laughs> I will read to you. Uh, I will write to you the third book, inshallah. OK. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, and I suppose just before we move in, into the book, we had, we had talked earlier about the perceptions of the Arab Emirates and also in terms of women there. And if you wanted to maybe share a bit in terms of where that is now. Yeah, of course, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the misconception about the woman in our part of the world is, uh, is of, a, of a high grade, you know. Whatever we do, um, it's not seen whether we have achieved or we haven't achieved. And I think this uh, caused me a bit of bitterness there where I had to work very hard. So I was, the, uh, of course, after the decree of Sheikh Mohammed, I became the founder and the president of Dubai Business Women Council with me, like Mrs. Faiza and the rest of the team. And we thought, what can we do? So that uh, visit to Belfast in 2014, it was from Dubai Business Women Council that I came to know about uh, uh, Queen's University. So we thought that the best thing to go about it is that to travel around the world to see. Let's go. We went to Japan. We went to Australia. We went to Canada. We went to the United States. We came to England. We went to Europe. Everywhere. You name the countries that we went to. And all the time, the whole group will be there. And we will be, we don't go just go and sit there and sit in the conference and listen. We will pick and choose the proper conference that will really add value to us. And we will go for that conference. But what we will ask is that one of us should be the walkie-talkie. <laughs> OK? So, of course, among my uh, friends, they were all happy to say, Raja, you will know how to do it better. So I took that initiative. And we went around the world to speak about the women in our part of the world 
and tell them that this is what we have achieved. Our women are doctors, and here are examples, Dr. Akhawla, Dr. Of course, you are a man, you know, I, I, I am talking about the women now. <laughs> <laughs> and all these doctors, all these um, lawyers, all these engineers now in the space, uh, teachers, you name them, politics in the cabinet and, and, and uh, ministers, um, ambassadors, uh, you name it. Still, the outside world doesn't want or doesn't because of the stereotype, you know. Mm -hmm. And because also of our, the way we dress up, I think. And this, is, uh, this uh, really uh, make the people think, no, I don't think she understands what we say, you know? And that is the fault here. Because you shouldn't look at a person, he is uh, dressed well and nice and good looking, that he is uh, the clever person. No, there might be a person who is down to earth, but he is a genius. OK? Yeah. So uh, and here I have examples of uh, uh, when we used to go to um, conferences, once uh, we were in Holland. And, uh, and the, uh, the head of our conference uh, person, he was from Qatar, he had uh, organized all that. And he said, there is a journalist who wants to interview you, Raja. I said, OK. He said, but be careful, huh? He's very, very sharp. And he's very clever. And he has a very sharp tongue. I said, OK. He had written the book of the queen or something he named to me. Now I can't recall. I said, doesn't matter, you know. It's only a question and an answer. If I know the question, I will answer. If I see myself that I am going to be hesitant, I will say, I don't know this question. I am, I am very free to say that, because nobody can really dictate their terms on me. He said, uh, you will be surprised. I said, OK, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so we went into the room for him to interview me. And the first thing he will ask me about my hijab. He says, uh, they say, before that, he say, they say you are a businesswoman. I said, yes. So he said, don't you think that the way you look it deprives you from being a real businesswoman? I said, oh, that is a very good question. Really, I have to answer. <laughs> mm. So I told him, I will answer your question. But before answering it, I will ask you a question that you should answer me. And from there, I'll take it up. He said, yes, ask me. I said, you live with your family? He said, yes. He said, and when you wake up this morning and you got dressed up to come to work, did anybody tell you there is something wrong with your uh, look? He said, no. He said, nobody? He said, no. He said, I am telling you, there is something wrong with your look. <laughs> So he said, what is, uh, what is wrong with my look? I said, your tie is not matching your suit. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that? So he became, uh, uh, what? I said, yes. To me, as a woman sitting looking at you, your tie is not matching your suit. <laughs> now you like it, you don't like it, your tie is not matching your suit. <laughs> so he said, oh, OK. Uh, can we start the interview? I said, no, thank you. I thought you were coming to ask me about what is there in my brain and to explore what is there. But unfortunately, you have come to see what am I wearing on my brain. I am not covering my brain. I'm only covering my private head, OK? So thank you very much for your interview. I, I don't want to do this interview, and I walked out. Very good. OK? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So the woman, thank you. So the women in our part of the world is, are being valued by their leaders. Let me tell you, this is a very important thing, that we are in United Arab Emirates. We have a, 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 a it's like give and take, you know? Uh, we have leaders who believed in the women. Yeah. And we had women who were ready for this belief to take it further, to be successful, to change uh, 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 the, the way they lead, the way they educate themselves, the way they deal with people, the way they deal with their work. So it was both parties uh, take and give, you know. They gave us the liberty and the trust. And we as women really worked hard into that direction to prove to our leaders that we are the people whom you had put faith in. And this is what makes me proud of my people in United Arab Emirates. So whenever I go anywhere and they tell me you have uh, uh, achieved this or that, I said, I haven't achieved it for myself. 
I have achieved it for the next generation, for the people who are working, for the women of the Emirates. That achievement belongs to all of us because it is not only for me. Because if it is only for me, then I am all this book throw it out, you know, because there is no authenticity, there is no leadership skills, there is no belief in teamwork. So uh, we have we have as women we have gained the trust of that's why they were really very happy to appoint uh, ambassadors yeah. in france in, in, in. and uh, and they are doing a fantastic job you know yeah. so and whom are they representing the united arab women leaders yeah. so this is what we are really proud of and we are lucky with you know yeah yeah no we, we did talk at length about that and in mm. terms of what the government were doing and how supportive they were of women's empowerment and even around childcare as well. Exactly. Yeah. And now when they saw, the government saw that the woman has to work long hours. Now we were the generation of luckiness, I call it. <laughs> you know why? Because we have seen the poverty and we are now into this nice uh, path of uh, seeing the, uh, the results of when you suffer in poverty you become more, um, uh, you know, you can do more things. Yeah. And then we are looking at the future. What is there hidden for us in the future? So the government saw that those people who come to work, the young generation, now we have to help them because they have to also create families for themselves. You know, we can't just take them just like that, uh, work 24 hours. And, uh, uh, and ignore the other side of them being girls to get married, to have children. They created, um, uh, what do you call it, nurseries in, in yeah. the government. And they created uh, um, uh, timing the, and the, also the long time, 90 days of maternity. They created so many things. And I am so happy to say that we, as Issa Saleh al Gur company, lead exactly the same path of the government. We have also 90 days. So let them work, let them be happy, let them look after their families and achieve both targets. And I always keep on telling women, it is not that because you started your career path and you got married and you had children and you were deprived from uh, you know, being there with your career uh, two years or three years, that is the end of the world. No, that is the beginning of the world because you are leading a family, you are bringing up a children for the future, and then you can look after yourself there. I am myself, I am working for the last 45 years, but my daughters are not working. One of my daughters worked two years, and the other one worked, I think, almost one year, and they all got married and they sat at home. But they didn't sit at home doing nothing. This is the first advice yeah. I told them. Yeah. Don't sit at home and forget yourself. Sit at home and think for yourself. One of them is a jewelry designer, and the other one is a calligraphist. So they didn't miss anything. Now their kids are growing up, but they are into their path of uh, building their career. You know. Yeah. So this is how we are working as women in United Arab Emirates. Yeah. No, it was it was great to to hear that uh, support for empowering women. Um, so just going back to the book and, and the power of authenticity, um, why is it so important to be an authentic yeah, leader? Uh, to be an authentic person is very, very important because you have to be clear, not clear with the people only. First of all, clear with yourself that, you know, I am 100% uh, sure of myself. I am 100% sure that I am treating people in the right way. I am 100% sure that I am leading the right path. I am 100% sure that I am helping my community. I am 100% sure I am looking for the future, what is going to come. So to me, the future is very important. Taking you from one place to another place with all these uh, characteristics really help. Teamwork. Now, if there was no teamwork between, now here I have to say Queen's University <coughs> and MBRU, because they are the beautiful um, um, example to be given. If there was no teamwork, you think Raja or Amr or Alawi or any one of us can have, have achieved all that? No. If it was not a teamwork from 
Queen's University with MBRU to achieve, uh, they would have achieved by themselves? They wouldn't have. They had the guidelines and they were serious. Queen's University was serious. That's why we were lucky that in 2022, uh, we graduated the first batch and the first six years of success. So that is itself an achievement. No, no university can achieve the, the period of time that we have created that university in months, not even a year. And then open the university and then getting the students and graduating them. And uh, one, of, one of the things within the book was, was very much around your values. Yes. Um, and, and how that le leads on to, to everything. Um, and some of the, um, in, in terms of the mind and the heart and the soul, would you yeah. like to share a little bit more about that? Yes, of course. We all have to have values, you know. We have, we have to have values. You can't work as a human being. You can't just um, drag on your life just uh, because then you will be, sorry for the word, like a rotten cabbage, you know. Because uh, there is nothing for you to achieve. But if you are enthusiastic, you have your brain, you think. You have a project in front of you. You think you will only dictate the terms and you will work towards that project and you will make it happen with your, only with your heart or with your passion or with your mind. If you are only with your mind, then you will be a dictator. Because then you will only dictate your terms and say, Deadline, I want this project to finish by the 15th of this month. And you go out of the room. Now, what does the team do? What do they have in their hand? They have time limit. And this uh, leader had taken, uh, uh, dictated his terms. And he left the room without even guiding us, without, uh, uh, without even looking into that the team can uh, think outside the box give the team uh, the opportunity to think with you, not to dictate your thinking on him. Let everybody think together. Let even the person who is negative in your team, he doesn't sit and want to participate. You encourage him to participate so that you can get the, uh, we call it the, the best of the best, you know? Uh, that what we get from the milk, the uh, butter cream. from the milk, the cream. Yeah. yeah, that you get. But if you only dictate your term and get out of the room, that person will deliver to you, but he will deliver it dry without any sauce on it. You know? <laughs> so yes. you have to be very, very careful with your team. Team has to be very comfortable with you, and team have to feel your presence, and team has to feel when you leave this room, what are they going to say about you? Oh, listen to him, what he said, all oh, nonsense, he doesn't even practice one of the things. Or they will say, oh my God, you know, he opened our eyes on this subject, on this subject, on this. If we take from here and here and here and put all together, we will be there with this project. Yeah. Um, and, and you do talk about it in terms of, you know, what do people think about you when you've left the room? <clears throat> so over the years, when you were younger, do you, you know, what, has your style changed? Mm. What would people have thought of you when you left the room when you were in your 20s or 30s mm. as opposed to yeah. now? Uh, definitely, uh, you know, um, I will not be truthful neither. No, I will not be authentic neither to myself nor to you nor to the, the audience. If I say I haven't changed, of course <laughs> I have changed. Of course I have changed. Because when you are in your 20s, when you are in your 30s, you are still gaining, you know, uh, observing. You are learning, you are seeing life differently every day. You are young, your, uh, your um, uh, actions are different. But once you grow more older, you become more stable in your life, you take whatever was positive from all these years of experience to put them into your, uh, 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 into your being, well-being there, and to move forward. This is, I have changed definitely. Uh, 360%, you know, from the day. I can't see myself when I was 20, although I feel that I wish I was there. <laughs> Not because there are so many things to learn, you know. Yeah. But to me, I would love to learn day by day. I, I keep on learning. Yeah. I don't stop learning, you know. Yeah. Even when I came to business, what did I learn? I learned business where I was not able to do it in the university. And I came as an English teacher and the principal of a school 
to come and run uh, uh, this big business uh, for my father, you know? And I asked him for uh, the first time that I believe that, you know, the chairman has to believe in me is that in uh, uh, one of the years, I can't remember which year, but our general manager passed away. All of a sudden, heart attack and passed away. And my father was um, an ambassador in UK here for 20 years. And I was running the business there by myself, with, uh, of, course, with, of course, with the help of all the team that were there. Without them, I, I wouldn't have been able to achieve. And I called him and I said, Dad, you know, Mr. So-and-so has passed away. And uh, what do you want us to do? I wanted to see what will he advise me. He said, Raja, quickly look for somebody to replace him so that you don't feel you are, uh, you know, you are losing the grab on the business. And at that time, I was thinking in my head whether to tell him that or not. Then I became very brave. I said, Dad, you know, can you give me a few months to one year? Let me be your general manager. Let me run those companies for you. And if you see me incapable of running those companies, I won't feel bad at all. Just tell me, Raja, step down. There is another man coming for you. Wow. Yes. And he said, are you sure of yourself? I said, I am 100% sure of myself. And I ran that company from that day until today for more than 16 years without a general manager. And wow. Yeah. I was the general manager, I was the managing manager, and I was doing everything until we brought my eldest son who was working in the, in the government for 12 years. We told him, and he had studied, of course, business and all. Now you join the family business and you start being the general manager for that, for the group. And here we have, where we have maneuvered, you know? Yeah. Mm. Um, and one of the other things from the book that I took was certainly that you, you're calm and composure, yeah. um, and that that is something that has come over the years in being able to stop and to um, not let people read your face either. Yeah. Um, and I know for me, everybody says, oh, Roselle, we know what you're thinking before you say anything. But um, And whether I had asked whether that was something that was learned or how did that come about, and, and one of the examples in the book is with regard to a supplier and um, if you want to share that, that story. And, the supplier and the, who uh, came and signed with me in Dubai. The, the one, yeah, who, who you... Who he, he didn't he, want to give me the agreement. He didn't, yeah. Mm. <laughs> that, yeah that supplier, he's a German supplier and we were dealing with his goods just uh, re uh, in the recent days. That we, uh, as soon as we start any project, we will sign a contract with the supplier saying that uh, this is our um, uh, product, and we will be exclusive for that product. So, of course, he answered my people, uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, we are not interested because we don't give exclusivity. I said, okay, well and good, thank you very much. You go and look for somebody else in the market. I called him, and I talked to him, and he said no, and, da, da, and he started wanted to convince me. I said to him, but what if I build, he said, after five years, I'll give you the exclusivity. I said, why should you give me exclusivity after five years? You want me to work five years free for you, even if I get money every year, uh, that much money from your product. You want me to build the market for you, and then you come and take that product from me and give it to somebody else. You call that exclusivity? I don't want this exclusivity. My exclusivity is to give me and sign with me on the same day. And he, and, uh, the next day, uh, I found my people coming, you know, Mr. So-and-so is coming all the way from Germany to meet you. Because he's also from a family business. I said, well, good, very good for him. Let him come and meet me. What will he meet with me? He said, I wanted to see this stubborn lady, why she did not agree to sign non-exclusivity for five years. I said, because I am stubborn and I think for myself. I don't think only for others. I think for my own benefits, too. So he came and he sat with me, and he was so much uh, impressed with our companies. We did a, a good uh, presentation about our companies and how we deal with all the companies and what products we have and how many years we have been with Unilever, how many years we have been with BAT, how many years we have been with Siemens. And I said, Siemens is your own uh, German thing. And Siemens is... Uh, <laughs> 
uh, is a very well known internationally, and we are the agents for Siemens. So what else do you want from me? So he said, I'm ready to sign your contract. <laughs> he signed the contract, and he left the place happy. He is happy, and I am happy. He is getting money, I am getting money. So that's how it works. Yes, um, uh, yes and I, I think what comes across in the book is, is how calm you were yes, around that yes. and your composure. And it was because of your, you knew what you were doing, you had done, your, you had prepared, and therefore you were able to be calm and This composed. is what has come into this book, yeah. negotiation. Yeah. Now, when you negotiate with a person or with a company, and that negotiation takes you further to the end, and uh, you feel, <clears throat> like in my case, you feel, no, no, it's not the right way to do it. <coughs> Sorry. Then you say, no, you shouldn't feel sorry. And you should be proud of yourself. And you should say, I left it because I don't want it. Not I left it because they took it from me. Yeah. Because if they take it from me, here where I will be bitter. But I left it because I don't want it. So if it comes, then it is well and good. If it doesn't come, then in negotiation, that's the way how it should go. You shouldn't feel that you have failed. And that's, yeah. that's the important thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and some of the other um, <clears throat> areas in the book, in, in the importance of listening and respect mm. and empathy and kindness mm. and commitment mm. and harmony, and that these are really, really important um, f f to you. But the key one that comes across the whole way through is about listening. Um, if you want to share, even in terms of your, your yeah. father. Yeah, it is, uh, listening is very, very important. You can go uh, and you can sit with people and look outside only and they are talking. You can sit in a meeting, you know, uh, eye contact and listening, why uh, we have uh, 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 autistic pe people that they don't have any eye contact, you know? And why you are a normal person, you have an eye contact. Now you are asking me, I am looking at you, but still I'm looking at the eyes of my uh, people who are there in this room with me. Um, uh, listening is very, very important uh, that you have to listen to people. You can't just go ahead, just say whatever you want and let people take it or leave it. No. And when you are discussing with people, you have to listen to them. You have to make yourself available for them and you have to make that person who is in front of you that you are paying full attention to you and I'm listening to you. And this part, I think the chairman has taught me because I used to sit, I was not a, uh, in business. I was a, an English teacher to come into business for three, four years being educated, being, uh, uh, because he told me this is a big university. You come to this business and you will learn from there. But for me to sit and listen to everybody, I mean, I used to sit and listen to every single person, even to our uh, dead uh, general manager. As soon as they will bring him the balance sheet, he will open it and he will tell him why this is uh, less here, why in 2002 it was that, why and this. Then when I leave the meeting, uh, uh, the meeting and the full uh, uh, room, I go to him, to his room. I don't go to my office. And I say to him, uh, can you please show me where does your eye go onto a balance sheet when it first comes to you? And he did. He did taught, uh, teach me a lot of things where I am so grateful and thankful. And one of the incidents that made me really sit and listen to people is that when I sit in the meetings with, with the, uh, this is what you want to tell me, no? Because it is yes. there in the book. Yeah? <laughs> that I used to have my pen and I used to scribble just making arrows. But my arrows always used to be to the top. I don't do downward arrows, you know, because it is the past, okay? So my arrows are always, uh, then my father caught me. He said, listen, don't play with your pen, I said, inshallah. And from that day, I will not touch the pen except if I have something to write very quickly and he can see me that I'm writing, I'm not just making arrows, you know. But I think I made arrows because I wanted to grow, you know. Very <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, thank you. Another phrase that um, resonated with me in the book was, uh, you can't clap with one hand. That's right. So if you want to share. 
that? Yeah, of course. I mean, we all now clap, but we didn't clap with one hand with the other people's hand. You know, you have to clap with two hands so that people can hear you. You have to look at the people with two eyes, one brain to think, one or two ears to listen, and one tongue to talk. You have to observe people. You can't just uh, um, uh, feel that there is nobody in the world except you. You have to know that you and the people are making it, not you are making it. It's always, I always describe that uh, when also they say that what is the difference between a man and a woman? You know, the women and the men and the, 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 the. I said, there is no difference. Why do you want me to compete with a man? I don't want to compete with a man. The man, God has created him a man because he wants him to be a man. And God has created me a woman because he wants me to be a woman. And there are certain skills that the man can do, certain skills. The man can't get pregnant, can he? No. OK. So uh, there are certain skills that the woman can do, and the woman, uh, the men can't do. And then there are, and why do I want to compete? Do I compete with my father, with my husband, with my children, uh, uh, brothers, with my children? I don't want to compete with them. Everyone has got his own qualities. Let them live and let them show whatever they have, and I will show whatever I have. So there is no, I don't want to be compared to anybody. And I said that in London when they said, that today is the Woman Day, and uh, we have to celebrate the Woman Day. I said, I don't want to celebrate the Woman Day. Why should I celebrate the Woman Day? The Woman Day is 365 days Correct. a year. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Why should I celebrate? God, God has made me and gave me 365 days. And why should I pick one day and leave the 364 yeah, out of no, my way? Absolutely. So when agree. I got all these yeah. uh, um, Happy Women's Day, Happy Women's Day, all the, uh, these messages, I didn't even answer any of them. <laughs> good, good, I good. Didn't. <laughs> I think it's a bit of a battle that I've been having as well, in that obviously we work every day around supporting women and around International Women's Day. Everybody goes bananas doing events and everything else. And it's like... <laughs> I prefer to, uh, to speak in a normal conference for women, but not on Women's Day. Yeah, very good. That's why I made my book here uh, on the 6th. I came here so that, because everybody was asking me, please come for our place, please come oh, yeah. for the Women's Day. I said, I don't want to come for Women's Day. Why should I come for Women's Day? <laughs> Um, and uh, Dr. Raja, are there any other aspects in terms of um, authentic leadership that you would like to, to share with the, with the audience? Yeah, I think I would like to share that any leader should be patient and should uh, understand his team and should give uh, his team the opportunity to think with him, not to think without him. To think with him, to get the, uh, 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 what he wants and then separately to think without him to give him more ideas. By doing so, the team and uh, the leader, they will be. And also another advice I would like to give the leader is that, uh, you know, when you finish a project and you go to your superiors, you don't say, I have done it. Who are you? You have done it. Who are you? Without your team, you wouldn't have done. Yeah. So he should bring my team and I have done this and this and this and this. Without my team, I wouldn't be able to do this and that. So once your team feel they are secured, they are valued, then they will produce more for you. As you are sitting, you will get a positive, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and before I go to the audience to take some questions, um, would, you, would you share your story about the... Um, Salesman who, no. yeah. <laughs> it's, my people have heard it in Dubai from. Dubai. Uh -huh. But this salesman, I went, I went into one of my shops that we sell white goods, and we used to sell small uh, items, you know, that you can pick and shoplift, you know, and uh, and he was sitting on his phone. It was a holiday day, and, and he was working overtime, uh, talking on his mobile, and I said, excuse me. He didn't even answer me. Excuse me, he didn't answer me. Again, excuse me, he didn't answer me. I went round, I had a big bag, I shoplifted everything, put inside my bag. Yes, yes, I did that. And, uh, and then I went to one of the fridges, I opened the fridge, and the, the rubber of the fridge, you know, the, 
it has fallen down. So I said, excuse me, I want to buy this fridge. So he came. Uh, he said, you know, I was busy on my phone. I said, I don't care you were busy on your phone or whatever, but I want to know why your fridge is damaged and you are putting it in the showroom. I am a customer. If I see a damaged uh, uh, fridge, that means that all your goods are damaged. And I, uh, I will not buy it. No, no, we'll take it to the, uh, to the service center and they will do it. And it's a very minor thing and all. I said, OK, so you have been doing this job for a long time? OK, can you get out of my shop, please? Get out of my shop. <laughs> and he went out. I said, pull the, one, uh, the screen down. And he pulled. And I locked the door. I called the general manager of that uh, entity. I said, come now. I am there. He said, now you will wait. Uh, it will take me 15 to 20 minutes. I said, doesn't matter. I will wait here with the, I have something very important. So he came. When he came, I gave him the, the key. And I, I emptied my bag. I said, I shoplifted all that from your shop. <laughs> and this man is a useless man. Let him get out of the company. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I kind of felt sorry for, for him once he realised who he was talking to, that he was in, in serious trouble. Um, OK, so look, I'm going to take um, questions from the audience now. Um, but we've had a few that came in over event, right? So one of them is, um, what do you believe are the essential characteristics or behaviours required to be a woman of influence in the business world? You have to be very serious. And you have to know your way. And you have to work systematically. System is very important. And time management is very important. You can't say, I am a leader of this business. I am a leader of this business. OK, what did you do for this business to grow? Uh, there is a scope of growth in this area. But there is no scope of growth in that area. Uh, how will you improve this area to be bigger? And how you? Or will you improve that uh, uh, dead body to be a bit more active? So you have to work in a system. You have to value uh, uh, your system, and you have to value your time. And you have to be very, uh, very cautious of time, of uh, dealing with people, of uh, understanding the market. I mean, to me, I every day I uh, I hear the news. I I watch. I am on media all the time to see what has happened. Uh, uh, um, Silicon Valley has fallen down, it has uh, grown up, and so on, because you have to build your uh, um, thinking. If you, uh, if you are an economy, uh, is that if the gold is low, what will happen? If the gold is high, what will happen? If the interest is high, how will people suffer because of the inflation and all that? So you have to be educating yourself all the time. It's not whatever you have read in the books and you came out of the university. Because that is only to get your degree and be recognized that you are a BA and get a nice good salary. OK? But is that only the way to lead your business? No, maybe out of all the four years, you will get uh, experience of, um, I will give it 30%. But the rest of the 70%, you will get it from life experience mm -hmm. of meeting people, um, uh, interacting with people. And that's why in the family business, we don't allow them to come to the family business because they are the children's owner. They go outside and work and rub shoulders with others and see how is in the society how people are fighting for their jobs and then come. And when they come into business, they are not there to play around with the money. No, you have your salary, you live on your salary. You are not going to touch one pound of my business. End of the year comes, you do good, you take good. You do bad, you take bad. And that's how we work. Yeah. And that's how I want to move to the succession plan, where I have put on the top of the a, a group or the committee that I have formed from the business uh, people, my nephews and my children, that to sit together, headed by my youngest sister. I didn't want to head that committee so that they don't tell me you are an old school. You are not <laughs> thinking about the new system, and you are not thinking about this and that. So I said, you are younger, almost 18 years than me. You had that one. But you are not allowed to take decision without coming back to me. And we will discuss it, and then we will take a decision. You have the lawyers. You have all these entities that they will work for you. 
but you have to do the homework for me. I'm waiting now. I said, how do you want the whole thing to come to you without a hassle? Because the first thing our leadership has asked me is that when the chairman passed away, what do you want, any help you wanted from our offices so that your family business doesn't get into, see how thoughtful they are, into mix up and all that? I said, no, sir, we are fine. 15 years ago, we have organized ourselves and we are on, the, uh, on solid ground. So I want to pass his legacy that he passed to me and my sisters to our children and see where we are going to head. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna open it up to the floor for questions. Anybody got any questions for Dr. Raja? That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one down there. There's a microphone coming. You mentioned your father being a self-made man. Yes. And obviously because of his success, you came into a very large corporate environment, which you've since grown. What do you think his lessons would be uh, for an entrepreneur, female or male, um, starting out versus your lessons about running a, a big corporation? Well, his lessons will be be dedicated to your work. And he doesn't have time to say that I want to rest. I want to uh, take a holiday and go for a long time. He, he was a uh, work addict. You know? He will just work 24 seven. Whether, and, and before we used to have one day holiday, that was Friday, okay? And then they made it Friday and Saturday and he used to grumble I say, what is, what is this that they have done? Saturday, it is a waste of time that we are sitting at home, we are not doing anything. But yet, he uh, educated himself. He was reading his newspapers, his books. You should come and see his uh, library, you know? I was thinking what to do with all those books. It is a big library that he has. Uh, uh, it, uh, the books has accumulated through all his, he was over 100 years, you know. Wow. So he, he really built himself of nothing. He was an, a postman. And then to learn English, you know what he used to do? He used to go with a doctor, he's called Dr. Ayub. He was a Pakistani doctor. And he told him that, you know, you want to study English, you want to learn how to speak English? He said, yes. He said, then you come with me, I'll teach you but you come and carry my bag and we will go around uh, in the community and we'll give vaccines. See, so he taught him how to give vaccine and he taught him English and he was with this doctor carrying his bag as an office boy to go around and come back. Yeah. And he learned and once the British Bank of the Middle East was opened there, he was the head of that British Bank of the Middle East. Mm. And then they sent him to England here to really educate him more, and they sent him to Bahrain, and they and and all that, you know. So he he believes in hard work. This is what I want to say. Yeah. He believes in hard work, dedication, and honesty. And uh, here, authenticity did not come only from me and my experience, because I saw that he was all the time being transparent and honest. He doesn't have anything to hide. He will tell you, yeah, I don't like this, I don't like it because it will not work. You know, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So he was honest with himself and honest with the team that he was working with, but he respected his team that until today, uh, all the people, when they come, the first thing they will ask, you know, we went upstairs just to see the chairman's room. But now you are called the chairwoman. Why don't you go upstairs so that we come into that room? I said, I don't dare go to that office. <laughs> yes, because I respect that office. That office that has given me all this experience, all this life, all this, I am gr uh, grateful to that man that I just will come inside every morning, good morning, and I'll go out. But I will never ever sit on his table because he was something different, yeah. special more than yeah. me. I, I'm, I'm not a special, but he was more <laughs> special than whatever I will say about him. I think we think you're pretty special. <laughs> yeah, um, you. <laughs> but I think, you know, in terms of the answer, it is the hard work, but the other piece is about the learning. Of course. Um, and in the back of the book here in the appendix, and, and you've been continuously learning your whole life, there's, there's 37 books recommended there, and these are just some of the business books. Now, you said you read lots of, you know, 
fiction as well. But it's clearly evident that lifelong learning is something that is really, really important. Yeah, it is very important. And for me, I don't like to go for flashy things, you know. I mean, when I wrote this book and I wrote the first book, I remember Elise was saying to me, do you want us to bring um, um, a professional uh, autographer, so that, uh, photographer, sorry, to take your photography and uh, photographs and all for the two books and all that? I said, don't bring anybody. My son takes good photographs. He will take my photograph. And okay. that's it. Both the books are my, my son. And this one oh, is very good. Yeah. Your son. Yeah. Um, any other questions from the audience for Dr. Raja? Yes. Oh, over here. Uh, firstly, Dr. Raja, thank you so much for an unbelievably authentic account of your career journey to date. Thank you. Um, I had the privilege of, of getting uh, to read it over the weekend as well. And the story, I think, about your son taking time out from yes, doing his out. homework and going <laughs> to sharpen the pencil and stopping the clock, his homework clock to do it, yeah. really resonated with me. And just thinking of that point, um, there's been a lot of noise and, and publicity in recent months about great leaders like Jacinta Ahern and Nicola Sturgeon stepping back because they, to quote them, have no, nothing left in their tank. Mm. So I'd be very interested to know, um, how do you keep your tank full um, with the very many asks on you. So what, what are the practices or approaches you know, that you take? Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, I am not a politician, you know, although I wanted to study politics, but it is good that I did not, you know. I am not a politician. I am a person who is uh, running her family business and making sure that her family business is run into a, a proper manner so that we don't lose the track of uh, the, the chairman's ambitions for life. You know, he used, you know, one of the things that he used to tell us, you know, I will be with you all the time. Even when I am in the grave, you put a phone for me there. Every day I will ask you, what did you make? How much you make? How much? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he will tell me that. So, so I want to keep that uh, enthusiasm also in me to pass it, okay? I am not a politician, but everybody has got his own reasons, whatever. For me, uh, I was discussing with my colleagues and all. I said, uh, now for me, the time has come that uh, uh, I will do whatever I love to do. You know, uh, uh, I will not retire because retiring means uh, dying, you know, for me, for me, okay? I will, I will keep my good work, hard work, enthusiasm, and I will work for the future of my children, for the future of the women in UAE, for the future of uh, really being a successful <clears throat> legacy to be read about, heard about, and all that. Uh, but I will never um, give up and say, uh, that's it, I have uh, retired and I have nothing to do. I will pick and choose and do whatever I love to do because I know I will be a perfectionist in that. And other people have got their own reasons, you know, if uh, um, uh, 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 politicians, they have their own reasons, uh, they know exactly what is their timing, they know exactly how do they want to go ahead. And uh, their life is completely different than a normal person like us life. A normal person like us will be looking at budgets and achievements and uh, uh, how are we going to do next year, 2023 will be a good year, or you think 2022 was a, a better year? And how we will uh, uh, cope with our uh, overdraft and all, all these things, you know? But a politician's mind is completely different. They are in a different world than us. Of course, they have got everything to do with economy because their, uh, their decisions do affect our economy, but uh, they are different, uh, they have a different mentality. So a stop time for a person is then when you can breathe and breathe the right uh, uh, oxygen for you. Because for all these years, for example, I am now 67, okay? And uh, I have worked all my years uh, for my uh, society, for my company, for my family, for my, for women issues, for, for, but now it has, the time has come that I want to work and love what I work for myself a little bit, you know, so that I value also myself. This is what uh, I think uh, I would like to do 
But uh, retiring, I will never retire. <laughs> never ever retire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, one last question mm -hmm. from anyone? There we go. Okay. Good morning. Um, so I see here in your book that you say that you lead with your heart and emotional energy is very important. You seem very proactive and very positive. Um, with, I suppose everyone in the room would be maybe keen to learn if you have any advice on how to keep your team positive, proactive and motivated. Because um, not everyone, I suppose, is like that naturally. And I think if you have any advice to give to us to bring other yeah. leaders on board or to help motivate others, um, is there anything in particular that you do? Um, to try and achieve that. Yeah, thank you very much for the question. I think, um, how do you uh, keep your team being motivated? You know, one of the things that we have implemented in our group company, we have uh, an account on WhatsApp called Leaders Account, okay? And every head of the company is in that uh, team. And whatever happens, we will share, and I am with them. Every one of us is there, you know, our 27 companies, plus uh, uh, the owners, uh, plus their children too, okay? So we will all share, and we will all, uh, I mean, this morning, uh, I was just sitting and having breakfast with my colleagues here, and they told me that we won a big prize from, uh, from economical department, uh, for uh, the service that we give in one of the big companies, furniture companies. And uh, uh, for two years continuous, we are winning the same, uh, the same uh, thing. So I became very, very important. So everybody was congratulating uh, that uh, team. And uh, so you can see when you go into any company, let me tell you, is that uh, and, uh, you, uh, you don't feel that as if you are an alien there, you know? Because some, uh, I remember one of the things that I was in Italy for Milano um, exhibition for furniture. And uh, in the morning, I always get up early. So I, I go uh, to a breakfast room and I tell the, uh, the, the reception that, uh, you know, there will be four people coming to join me. And I'm taking that big table. And one of the managers whom we have just recently recruited, that is years ago, he, tell, he told me, you know, I worked 12 years in one of the companies. I've never seen the managing director. Well, that is not a good sign. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to see your managing director. You have to see your manager, direct manager. You have to see your salespeople. So you, ha you feel the atmosphere. So you will sit at the table, have your breakfast, have your lunch, interact with your people so that they know exactly who you are. But if I take a small table of one person there sitting and my team is sitting there, that is, uh, that is uh, the biggest failure it will be in my life, you know? So this is how, as a team, you should work and as a leader, you should lead. This is how I, I don't know whether I answered your question or not. <coughs> yeah, okay. Okay, well, well, thank you so much. And um, like I said earlier, I, I did read the book. I was really um, impressed with the book. Thank I you. was motivated by the book. And I really recommend that, that people read it. The, the values and your authenticity comes across in how it's written as well and the honesty within the book. So um, really, thank you so much thank for you. coming here today. And thank uh, you for sharing. also for this uh, book, I have... Um, uh, I have listed also the books that I, I read. Yes. That is very, very important because, I mean, I read more than that. I read in everything. I don't only read in uh, business and all because yeah. I am, after all, I am a human being. I would like to take a novel and read it, whether it is a happy one or a sad one. I like to write poetry. I read Arabic books. I, uh, I am into all that, you know. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I have a lot of treasure that I have collected behind the door that I am not putting <laughs> outside to the market. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Um, could you please give a warm round of applause to Dr. Ajit Michelle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.